Hey YouTube. Okay, this video is uh, uh, I had intended to go to an on an overnight trip last weekend uh, for trail days, but we had some bad weather forecast coming through, and it's probably a good idea I did not go. Uh, I had an inch and a half of rain in my rain gauge in my backyard. Uh, that would have been pretty devastating for where I was camping as the ground uh, and most of the terrain in the Sam Houston National Forest it's flat and if you set up a camp particularly a tarp with a oilcloth ground cover uh, you could set it up in what looks like a flat area that turns into an uh, inch and a half deep puddle after an inch of rain Okay, so it, it kind of works out, but the thing about it is, is I have all this stuff. I was going to demonstrate it in the video in the woods. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the contents of the pack. It occurs to me I hadn't done, I haven't done a loadout video. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of addressing the both the backpacking community portion of our audience and the living history guys in that I'm trying to make a point about the weight of classic camping gear. Classic camping gear gets a bad rap as being heavy. Okay, the gear is not heavy, the gear choices can make it heavy. Okay, just like today. Just like today. Now, I will say this, that uh, camping gear, old school camping gear from the 60s and 70s, backpacking style, does deservedly get a rap for being heavy. But that's not because the gear was heavy. It's because suddenly uh, the load-bearing equipment being used got to the point where it could support a lot of weight comfortably okay and because of that we did it we loaded up our packs with a bunch of crap we didn't need and that didn't change until about the 1990s we will be getting into that uh, in the history of gear series in a few months uh, the other thing I want to say is uh, every week I present a new design in my store a design of the week this week I've added in a uh, set of uh, mugs and t-shirts and things like that that feature uh, a depiction of the classic Coleman 249 lantern from the 1930s up to the 50s. It's an iconic piece, holds a place of honor on my bookshelf. Uh, and doing this video reminds me, I need to get this damn thing going. I'll set that here for right now. And the other thing is, if I have done everything right, if you look in the upper right hand corner, you will see a button that says join. Okay, and I have uh, enabled the YouTube membership program so that I can kind of draw in a little bit more uh, income from the channel. And it gives you an opportunity to show a little bit more support if you think I deserve it. Okay, I'm not begging. I'm saying if you think if if you think the job I'm doing is worth it, uh, go ahead and buy me a cup of coffee. I set it at the lowest rate, which is a donation of four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. If you click on that join button, you will see a video that explains the whole ding dang thing. Okay, all right, the following video is my loadout for a classic camping overnight backpacking trip. 
I've divided it into several sections. The first one is the load-bearing gear, what it is I carry everything in. Then I've got my sleep and shelter system. And then my tool chest, which is all the tool, everything I might need in the woods. Then the, lastly is my kitchen and water. Okay, you'll see uh, the total weight loadout. It's definitely not ultra light. I will give you that. But the only thing that keeps it from being ultra light is the materials it's made out of. Let's get into it. Let's start with the load bearing equipment. I have weighed each item. I have calculated my classic camping base weight the same way you would do it today. Even though back in those days they didn't quite do it that way. Nobody cared about base weight. They just cared about getting in the woods. Okay? All right. Let's listen to the old guy uh, tell you about a few things. Oh, before we do that, I need to mention, number one, that uh, at the end of this video is going to be a playlist that features videos on the majority of the items I'm going to show in this video so that you can see them in more detail. I'm going to be flashing thumbnails in the uh, corner up here, over here, uh, that will show the thumbnails of the videos in that playlist. Okay, so if you see something that you really want to know more about, go to the playlist at the end of the video and click on that thumbnail and it will bring you to the video. Okay, and as always, if this video provides you with any education or entertainment, any value whatsoever, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and share it in your social media sites. Okay? By liking and subscribing, you tell YouTube that you like the video and it will tell other people who have the same kind of interests as you and I where the video is. Okay? All right. Now let's let the old guy start talking. Okay, load bearing. First comes the pack itself. And we're at 2.6 pounds. And the haversack. One point two pounds. Okay, so there we go. That's the load bearing stuff. Now, if you want to know more about each of those items, uh, the pack that I am using there is a copy of an original one that came from somewhere around 1912, nine, between 1910 and 1918, really. <clears throat> that video is uh, whoop, up here. Uh, this is just a thumbnail. It's not a, it's not a hot link. You can't click on it. But when you go to the playlist at the end of this video, if you want to know about the original pack, click on that thumbnail. If you want to know how I made it, click on this next thumbnail. And if you want to know about my haversack and what is inside of it, click on this third thumbnail once you get to that video. Now, if you want to see how it all works, how it looks all together, here's 30 seconds of a trip I took a couple weeks ago. So let's take a look at what's inside that pack. And please keep in mind, those, those thumbnails I put up there, they're non-clickable links. But when you go to the playlist that will be at the end of this video, those thumbnails will show up. And if there's one of particular interest you want to watch, click on it. That's why I posted the picture. I hope I'm not confusing people. Okay, let's take a look at what's inside the pack. Okay, sleep system. This is one pair cotton flannel blankets pinned into a sleeping bag. It weighs 3 pounds 4.21 ounces. Okay, ground cover. 
four foot by seven foot oil cloth weighs two ounce two pounds 3.4 ounces. Shelter, 8 foot by 8 foot oil cloth tarp. 4 pounds, 7 point, 4 pounds, 7 ounces, let's call it. Hold it right there. I know what you're thinking. We're 14.8 pounds and I haven't finished yet. Okay. Uh, what we've got here is the history of camping gear of the 20th century in a nutshell. Okay. In that most of the improvement that was needed to get to where we are today was in sleep and shelter systems. Now that is why there are so many videos in the playlist on the History of Gear series to the playlist that shows uh, the development of sleeping bags uh, prior to the Second World War. The challenge during the first half of the 20th century was with material, but methods of construction improved things. Once you married the methods of construction that uh, were developed during the first half of the 20th century with the materials from the second half of the 20th century, you get a backpacking revolution like what happened in the late 1960s and the late 1970s. Okay, let's fill up the haversack. Okay, next comes the tool chest. Kephart knife, can opener, and pocket knife. That's 14.97 ounces, 15 ounces, just about a pound. More tool chest stuff, sewing kit, and there's also some adhesive tape and gauze in there, uh, a roll of string, a roll of waxed twine, waterproof match safe with matches, don't need that card, you got a can opener. And a collection of very big safety pins. 8.17 ounces. Okay, now I'm going to mention here, first off, that uh, you may have noticed that in my uh, sewing kit I have some gauze and some medical adhesive tape. Uh, I also would have caught, carried a bottle of either mercurochrome or iodine. That would have been it for uh, the general population uh, for backpacking during this period. First aid wasn't a big thing until after the Boy Scouts got going and especially after the First World War when the military realized that they were treating a lot of injuries that could have been self-treated by the soldiers. Uh, it was after the First World War when first aid really got to be a big thing in any outdoor activity. I do carry a full first aid kit with me when I go, just not as part of my uh, overall, uh, it's part of my overall loadout but not part of my historic loadout. I will carry it with me, along with about six, eight pounds of camera gear, too. Okay, we're almost done. Let's talk about uh, my kitchen and how I carry my water. Okay, next comes the kitchen. First off, mess kit with the utensils. Just a fork and a spoon in there. That's one pound, 0 0.3 ounces. My hobo stove and my coffee cup, 12.8 ounces. Okay, water carriage. World War I surplus canteen and cup. 
13.3 ounces. Two quart Oasis canteen with cover. 9.72 ounces. Okay, there you got it. Now, for modern day backpackers, if you look at that, that's uh, 19.55 pounds. Uh, if we factor in stuff I've forgotten, things I throw in at the last minute, something I think I might need, well, then it goes, let's just say it's about 22 to 25 pounds as a normal load. Along with that, I would probably carry a rifle or a shotgun. Uh, much of the food that I would eat on the trail during this period would be uh, food I have foraged. Uh, squirrels, rabbits, that kind of thing. Small game that can be prepared over a single campfire. Okay, Some folks would carry a hatchet uh, in order to cut uh, wood for a frame for your tent. I'm using a tarp. I don't need that. I've got three quarts of water there because this is Texas and I need three quarts of water whether I go overnight or not. Today we have the advantage of being able to filter our water on the trail. We can therefore carry less of it if we have uh, more water sources. Back during this period, if I need to replenish my water supply, I have to boil it. That would be the accepted method. There were water filtration methods, but they were very heavy and designed mainly for use at semi-permanent cabins or hunting camps. Okay, so basically what I'm talking about here is uh, the old days kind of get a bad rap as being heavy. Okay, now, uh, again, I know I can lighten this load by substituting a modern sleeping bag and a modern tent, and I can lose about six pounds off this right away. Okay, throw in a nylon uh, pack, and again, the weight goes down. But when you get right down to it, between 20 and 25 pounds really isn't a bad load. So don't be afraid of doing it the way great grandpa did. It ain't that bad. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you did. It really helps people find this channel. Uh, so people who think, who have the same interests as you and I do. Okay? Uh, we got more stuff coming uh, on the general theme of the history of camping here in the 20th century. We are getting very close to leaving the 1930s, going into the World War II and the 1950s. Kind of where I came from. Alrighty, we'll see you down the trail.